Hello, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Janet Khan. I'm a, a neonatologist and pediatrician and an educationist. Uh, today I am going to talk about approach to neonates with breathing difficulties and this is uh, going to be uh, very basic and helpful in terms of uh, approaching those uh, patients. Now the objective of this talk uh, to evaluate and diagnose the most common cause of respiratory distress in the newborn period also to differentiate between the normal results of newborn chest radiograph and the radiographic patterns. Then we will uh, distinguish between pulmonary disease and cyanotic congenital heart disease that they are going to, together in the um, um, appearance of, uh, for clinical sign and symptoms. Then we will discuss the common complication of various respiratory disorder and the untoward effects of specific therapies intubation and mechanical ventilation. The introduction of this uh, is, uh, as we all know, the respiratory distress is the more uh, commonest uh, morbidity requiring the admission in the neonatal period. It's approximately 30 to 40 percent of total admissions and uh, distress, uh, respiratory distress, accounts um, approximately 11 to 14 percent of live birth. Uh, the incidence uh, of the respiratory distress in day one of the life is uh, less than 30 weeks is uh, almost 60 percent, 30 to 34 weeks of gestation 43 percent and 34 weeks and above is 5 to 6 percent. Respiratory distress is defined by the presence of at least following three features. So we have to understand that how we define our uh, our uh, sign and symptom. So tachypnea, as you all know, is mean the fast breathing. Anything above 60 per minute is tachypnea for the newborn. The normal newborn uh, respiratory rate is 40 to 60. Retractions can be intercostal, subcostal, external or suprasternal, and noisy respiration, for example, grunting, stridor, or wheezing. Furthermore, cyanosis is also a, an evident sign or advanced sign of respiratory distress. Uh, but the problem is that we have to understand one uh, very clear um, Thing, that the central cyanosis is defined as cyanosis of the mucous membrane and it is more concerning than acrocyanosis, okay, which can be normal finding in the newly uh, born infant. So the central and acrocyanosis we have to differentiate. Central cyanosis become clinical apparent when at least 5 gram per 100 ml of the hemoglobin become unsaturated. So as you all know, the cyanosis appear when the um, amount of unsaturated hemoglobin uh, is increasing as compared to the saturated hemoglobin. Clinically detection uh, on the amount of desaturated hemoglobin present in the patient who have anemia or those who have a larger amount of fetal hemoglobin. So we have to uh, take all those points into consideration when we approach to a newborn with respiratory distress. So we start with the basic thing, history. For ex uh, so we have to know, uh, ask about gestational age, is a term or the preterm baby, is a one uh, single uh, baby or a multiple like twins, triplets, quadruplets, a risk factor for infection like PPROM, uh, which is a premature um, uh, prolonged rupture of membrane. Is there any um, infection in the mother, which we call chorionitis, uh, herpes simplex uh, virus lesions, and so on and so forth. Physical examination, uh, of course, we have to see the respiratory rate. It is uh, tachypnea, it is bradypnea, it is intermittent apnea. We have to find it out. The cyanosis, as we discussed, the retractions, auscultations, the decreased aeration, RDS, distant heart sound, and pneumothorax. Together with all this, we have to do. Uh, we have to see the other sign and symptoms. For example, cleft palate, macronathia, uh, ischemic abdomen. For example, in the congenital aphthematic hernia, when uh, the intestine moves to the uh, chest cavity, excessive frothing secretion, for example, in uh, tracheoesophageal fistula, 
worsening condition at rest and improved with crying uh, hallmark of coenal atresia. We will come back to all of these, uh, um, but first uh, we have to define the noisy breathing. The noisy breathing is the stretter uh, first, which is the sonorous sound, which uh, is a mid-pitch monophonic uh, sound, uh, and it's uh, caused mostly because of nasopharyngeal obstruction. Then stridor, you all know it is because of the laryngomalacia, laryngeal obstruction, most commonly in the croup which is the parainfluenza virus infection. Wheezing, you all know high pitch whistling sound. It is uh, from the lower air, airway. It is uh, the hallmark of the pneumonia, asthma, bronchiolitis. Uh, grunting is the high, uh, low or the mid pitch expiratory sound caused by the sudden closure of the glottis during the expiration in an attempt to maintain the functional residual capacity and this is the very important sign, um, sign for TTN which is transitive kidney of the newborn, respiratory distress, pneumonia, atelectasis. So this is a very hallmark uh, sound which uh, these newborn have with the respiratory distress. So the clinical and historical clues, if you are having dealing with a baby with the respiratory distress syndrome, then the first thing is that is mostly is the premature baby less than 35 weeks, okay? Congenital pneumonia can happen in any um, baby, but the most commonly with the mother with the chorioamnuitis or any infection, urinary infection, unclean vagina examination. Unexplained pattern of the onset of labor, polymorphs in gastric aspirate, or the pre-labor prolonged rupture of the membranes. Meconium aspiration syndrome, when you have the uh, meconium stained liquor, then you can uh, understand uh, that uh, this can be the MAS. Air leak, which is the pneumothoraces, uh, pulmonary interstitial emphysema, pneumopericardium. These are all happen when there is a sudden deterioration of, of the baby um, who are previously stable and then sudden deterioration happen, especially with the uh, baby uh, with the meconium aspiration or on the ventilator or chest hyperinflation, differential air entry. Tracheal esophageal fistula, if you have a history of polyhydramnias, excessive frothing from the mouth, uh, absent stomach bubble on chest X on abdominal X-ray and scaphoid abdomen. The other clues, uh, for example, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, the scaphoid abdomen is very common, hypoxia uh, is very common because of the lung uh, hyperplasia of that side, either right or left. Diaphragmatic paralysis also can happen, it's abnormal presentation, the abnormal movement of the chest, inborn error of metabolism, unexplained sibling death, unexplained metabolic acidosis and hypoglycemia seizures happen in the baby. Aspiration pneumonia, risk factor for breathing, swallowing uh, in coordination, anatomical defect like cleft palate, upper airway pathologies, persistent pulmonary hypertension. So if you have these babies, how you assess these babies? So first of all, the respiratory, uh, which uh, for the respiratory detection, grunt, cyanosis, and stridor, and I gave you the, already gave you the example and the definition of all those. Check the uh, supplemental oxygen by using the pulse oximeter, observe the chest expansion, check air entry, trans illumination if air leak uh, suspected, potency of the nostrils, especially if sinus is improving with crying, uh, so you can uh, think about coenal atresia. Other are abdomen, uh, contour of the abdomen, uh, palpate liver, heart sounds, fontanelle, skin, CNS, for example, tone, uh, the dilatation of the pupil and the alertness of the baby. So what is the difference between the respiratory distress and the tachypnea? So the normal respiratory rate, 40 to 60 per minute, as uh, we discussed before, tachypnea is more than 60. Distress is respiratory rate more than or less than 60 with addition of retraction, grunting, central cyanosis, poor feeding lethargy. So remember, only tachypnea is associated with the fast breathing. The respiratory distress in addition to fast breathing 
with the retraction grunting central sinuses but sometimes it can be it can happen that the uh, respiratory rate is less than 60 but still you have retraction grunting central sinuses uh, it still be labeled as a respiratory distress so the clinical definition applies to any patient who has difficulty breathing and either of the following so type 1 we are divided into two types type 1 hypoxemia and type 2 is the hypercapnic type 1 is the hypoxemic means po2 uh, arterial po2 is less than 60 mmig while the breathing in the room air type 2 is the hypercapnic when the arterial pco2 is more than 50 mmig usually with the ph less than 7.35 it's very important to understand this concept of hypoxemia and hypercapnia and it is always arterial blood gas not the capillary not the venous blood gas uh, values so if you see in your uh, pediatric advanced life support uh, book you find it out that the respiratory distress respiratory failure and open without support um, is, this is the difference between the respiratory distress and failure so Initially, we differentiate between tachypnea and respiratory distress. Now, we move to uh, the second level, which is the difference between respiratory distress and the failure. So, as you can see here, the uh, respiratory distress, all those which we uh, just discussed, tachypnea, effort, clear sound, uh, agitated, pale, variable, but the failure is slow breathing, no effort of the breathing, abnormal sound, bradycardia fails to respond cyanotic and variable so these are the main uh, differences between failure and distress to be uh, specific now we have few scores i have to share with you um, in the newborn period you can you uh, use it it is called downy's score uh, the lower the score the higher the chances the baby is good, the baby is doing well, but the higher the score, the worse uh, is the um, condition of the baby. So for it, 0 to 1 and uh, 2, you can uh, calculate it. So the higher the score, the chances baby has more silent symptoms. The other is called Silverman Anderson Respiratory Severity Score is also your examination score. So it's grade 0, 1, 2, you plus everything. Again, higher the score, the baby is sicker the baby. So you can see the baby if it's synchronized breathing, if it is uh, lag on inspiration, seesaw breathing, uh, na uh, nasal flaring, no nasal flare flaring, and all those sound which we just discussed and then you uh, calculate it. So if in a numerical way, in a tabulated form, it is, looks like that, that upper chest retraction, lower chest, the void retraction, nasal dilatation, and the grunting. So all these come together in the, um, in the severity of the disease, that how much uh, severe is the disease. Now come to the uh, next part, investigation. Of course, uh, the ABGs or arterial blood gas analysis is the um, hallmark or the main stay for uh, investigations uh, in any respiratory problem. So these are the normal and abnormal values which we consider in the uh, newborn babies. Predictal uh, oxygen, arterial oxygen should be 50 to 70 with an oxygen saturation 87 to 93 percent. Uh, arterial oxygen up to 80 mmg is acceptable in term infant. Hypoxemia, if anything less than 50. Low normal is 50 to 60. Hyperoxemia, if more than uh, 80 in preterm and more than 90 in term. Carbon dioxide normal value is 35 to 45. I think it is same in adult. Acceptable upper limit is 45 to 50. Chronic conditions like asthma, chronic lung disease, uh, more than 72 hours of ventilation, all these can we can accept up to 55 uh, mg. The hypocarbia, we don't want uh, the baby to be high, and there's a reason for that. Hypocarbia means less than 30 mmHg, which can increase the risk of periventral leukomalacia and the preterm neonates. So that's why we are very, very cautious when you, if the baby is on ventilator, to choose your ventilator uh, setting accordingly. 
So these are the uh, scoring system uh, for the arterial uh, oxygen, uh, pH and arterial carbon dioxide a score of more than three suggestive of ventilatory support requirement or any kind of a support requirement. It depends on the baby. So you put your values into that uh, table and then uh, assess um, your baby. Okay, so now we will go to some, uh, I will show you some uh, neonatal x-ray pattern associated with respiratory distress. So you, if you remember the seven dogs of new, uh, seven dogs uh, of a snow white, so we name accordingly. So granny, streaky, patchy, fluffy, bubbly, dotty, and blacky, and these are the diagnoses on that. I will show you, I, I will show you the x-rays now. So this is the grand glass typical appearance in the highland membrane disease. Uh, it's just when it becomes streaky, it's like, see, I marked it here, okay? And here also, it is transit tachypnea of newborn. Then it is patchy, as you can see the big patch. It is most uh, uh, pathognomonic of the pneumonia. If you have a fluffy like this, uh, this x-ray is not that very good but anyway you can see the fluffy or the cotton wool appearance is the meconium aspiration if you have bubbly appearance like this bubbles all these bubbles it's a bronchopulmonary dysplasia if you have a dots black dots it is pulmonary interstitial emphysema it's very easy to diagnose and if you have a black a lung on one side it is most uh, probably is the pneumothorax. So it's the grainy, streaky, patchy, fluffy, bubbly, dotty, blacky. It is all uh, different kind of a diseases and you can easily figure it out on your x-ray. If you go to the differential diagnosis of the respiratory distress in the newborns, the basically you have to um, know uh, that what are the preterm pathologies, what are the term pathologies, what are the congenital anomalies and non-respiratory causes. So it, just for your information, keep it handy. You can easily uh, correlate your baby with all these uh, conditions. This is the de developmental stages of the lung and the respiratory disease pathogenesis. So we have a five developmental stages. First one is the embryonic, second one is the pseudoglandular, then is canalicular stage, then is secular. So the age of viability according to the American Academy of Pediatrics is 23 weeks and beyond. Less than 23 weeks uh, is a gray zone and less than 22 weeks we, we don't resuscitate those babies and this come into the resuscitation. So now the 32, uh, so most of the babies uh, here, uh, if the preterm baby delivered by the secular stage, so this is called the new bronchopulmonary dysplasia, which is we call developmental arrest or the delay. And the structural injury is the old bronchopulmonary dysplasia, is the normal development because of the many things what we are doing uh, to the baby. So if you go through this um, later on in your textbooks, uh, you can easily understand that uh, the difference between the old and the new bronchopulmonary dysplasia. So each of the uh, lung development uh, stages are associated with some pathology. For example, if it is in embryonic age, if the some pathology structural morphogenesis happen as the all these structures are um, developing in that stage, which is zero to six. Then the pseudoglandular stage, canalicular terminal second, alveolar st stage, we have different kind of a disease. To make it easy, it is like that. If the preterm unit, if you get less than six hours, these are the diagnoses. If you get six to 24 hours, these are the diagnoses. If it is more than 24 hours, you, you consider these uh, diagnoses. Similar uh, in the term unit, less than six hours, six to 24 hours, and more than 24 hours. It is not hard and fast rule, but you should consider uh, these according to the uh, age of presentation. Now come to the extra pulmonary causes and the most important is the congenital heart diseases or the uh, diseases related to the heart. 
pulmonary hypertension, shock due to any co causes, surgical uh, causes, uh, uh, metabolic causes like acidosis, hypoglycemia, polycythemia, and anemia. So, how you differentiate between cyanotic heart disease and the pulmonary disease when the baby present to you in a respiratory distress? There are many, as you uh, as may, mentioned here, history, physical exam, the chest radiograph, arterial blood gas. We used to, uh, we are doing the hyperoxia test. Hyperoxia test is easy. Just put a baby on 100% oxygen for 50 minute, 15 minutes and then do a blood gas. If it is a cyanotic heart disease, the PO2 is less than 150 mmHg. If it is pulmonary disease, the PO2 go above 150 uh, millimeters of mercury uh, except in severe PPHN. So this is one of the very <coughs> handy tests. Nowadays echocardiography is available everywhere so if you think of the uh, congenital heart disease ask uh, your cardiologist or who can do the echocardiography to uh, help you out. Management uh, initial treatment is aimed at the resuscitation if uh, the baby is sick and he needs your help. The supportive measure could vary from oxygenation to various strategies of mechanical ventilation. Uh, but other than that, the very important uh, supportive therapies which we, we always uh, neglected or which we always overlooked is the thermoneutral uh, environment. We have to maintain the temperature of the baby. If the baby is hypothermic, is the, then it is uh, very uh, it has its own side effects. Electrolyte balance, we have to uh, see uh, the fluid and electrolytes of the baby. We should start antibiotics uh, empirically uh, pending the culture's results. Maintain normal arterial pressure. Hypertension should be corrected by using appropriate fluid volumes. So there are different uh, uh, characteristics of common oxygen delivery uh, system. Nasal cannula, nasopharyngeal cannula, nasal prongs, oxygen hood, and this table is very handy to have that how much uh, FiO2 you can provide with which uh, interface. Okay. Nowadays, we are using uh, humidify heated high flow nasal cannula in many, in all the age groups uh, very frequently, and it is a very effective. So for example, if you take the new NAID, these are the guidelines uh, which is published in 2015 and it is a very uh, well validated guidelines, okay? So initial setting, you start with six liters and if I have to uh, around 40% and then uh, escalate or de-escalate uh, accordingly. And then infant and then preschool and then school age uh, depend on your patient. This is the algorithm for initial management of, uh, of a new net with a respiratory distress syndrome. So first of all, check the airway, administer the oxygen, examine the features of respiratory distress, assess circulation, and do what we are doing here that provide oxygenation, uh, maintain the saturation, do a chest x-ray. If it is preterm in infant, then you he requires some early um, uh, positive pressure ventilation or continuous positive airway pressure, which is called CPAP, through the uh, uh, nasal interface. If the baby is not that great, then you have to intubate and then uh, go accordingly. So this is a very uh, good uh, preterm, and this is the red line that up to that point. You can do yourself. After that, you need your team to help you out because you cannot uh, resuscitate or you cannot uh, provide all those care uh, alone. So you need another doctor and at least uh, one nurse. When to call your senior for respiratory distress in infant uh, or a person um, more experienced? Uh, when stabilization uh, is challenging, when you suspect a heart disease, need for respiratory support, needs for mechanical ventilation, concern for evolving pulmonary hypertension, concern for evolving sepsis, inability to ventilate, pulmonary hemorrhage, or persistent progressing or progressing pneumothorax. So if we go a uh, couple of cases uh, very quickly, the 3.2 kilogram infant, uh, 38 weeks, Abgar scores are fine, nine and nine, one and five minutes, developed tachypnea and subcostal retraction, temperature is 36.6 degrees centigrade, which is fine, pulse is 165, 
is okay. Respiratory rate is a little bit high, 74. Aside from increased work of breathing, her physical examinations are normal. Oxygen via nasal cannula with a fraction of inspired uh, oxygen, which is FiO2, is 0.3 for 36 hours. She then uh, weans to room air. Now, with this small uh, information or with this little uh, information, you already can figure it out what is the uh, condition. And if I show you the x-ray, you can easily figure it out that it is transient tachypnea of the newborn and you can do accordingly. If you have a baby of 2.9 kilogram and 39 week gestation, rupture of membranes for 22 hours, the abgas are fine. He's requiring oxygen uh, 0.4, uh, which is 40%. Uh, the temperature is 37 degree and the uh, respiratory rate is 65. Uh, despite of giving CPAP, the baby still have grunting and requires intubation and have respiratory acidosis. And if this is the X-ray, so you can easily figure it out, it goes in favor of pneumonia. Now, as soon as I told you about the premature babies, 1.5 kilogram, always consider the respiratory distress syndrome first. So uh, you can easily figure it out when you uh, go through the history. The infant becomes cyanotic, required CPAP, subcostal retraction, grunting, uh, temperature is 36.8, the breathing is fast, and FiO2 is 40%. And if you see the x-ray, it is typical of respiratory distress. So it's not that difficult uh, to have the basic workup and basic management in these uh, babies. If you have a bigger baby, uh, she's a 4.4 kilogram, 41 week gestation. She's limp and cyanotic at birth. Abgar scores are not good, two at, uh, and seven at one and five minutes. Temperature is 37.2, pulse is 177 beats per minute, and the breathing is uh, 80 breath, uh, breaths per minute. The physical examination finding the marked increase of work of breathing with nasal fairing, subcostal, supraspinal retraction, and a barrel shaped chest, and the coarse ronchi. So if you can see it, this is typical pattern of the fluffy cotton wool uh, appearance as you can see here in these. So you can figure it out that it is meconium aspiration syndrome. So to conclude that part, the respiratory distress present with uh, any or all of the following uh, findings like tachypnea, grunting, nasal flaring, retractions and cyanosis, we must differ differentiate between respiratory distress and failure as I showed you in my early slides. Respiratory distress can be pulmonary or non-pulmonary. Cyanotic congenital heart disease is an important cause of neonatal respiratory distress, must be recognized promptly and, um, and you act uh, very quickly on that. Retained fluid or uh, fetal lung uh, liquid syndrome probably is caused by a delay in clearance of fetal lung fluid and it is usually benign and self-limited illness. RDS occurs in, occurs in primary uh, preterm infant, uh, severe uh, meconium aspiration. You can have, uh, require harsh uh, ventilatory supports uh, and can result in chronic lung disease. Neonatal pneumonia can be acquired antenatally, perinatally, or postnatally and cause very uh, depending on the time of the disease accusation. So if you go through this and then um, in your daily practice, remember these uh, initial sign and symptom, a scoring system of the blood gas for the sign and symptom and the physical examination, you can reach the diagnosis with the help of your x-rays very nicely and you can approach in a right direction with the right uh, management for those uh, babies. With that, I will end up here. Um, if you need, have any question, you can email me. It's junaidmuhib at yahoo.com, J-U-N-A-I-D-M-U-H-I-B at yahoo.com. I am more than happy to uh, answer any questions. Thanks a lot uh, for hearing that. And this is the end of uh, our presentation.